All right, guys, today I want to do something a little bit fun and a little bit different, and I wanted to talk about my workhorse knives. Like, these are the knives that uh, I carry a lot, but also see the most hard-wearing action, I guess is the best way to describe it. It's not, I don't have necessarily a perfect definition because I do carry a lot of knives, but these are the knives that uh, whenever industrial applications or whenever I need to be hard on a knife, uh, these are the knives that I plunge into those situations. Primarily, a lot of it has to do with outdoors, but whether it's batoning, cutting open bags of gravel, cutting open bags of cement, uh, just doing like the down and dirty tasks that knives are really supposed to do, probably many of us don't do, but you know, doing things like that, maybe even potentially prying on the tip, doing stuff like uh, stuff like that that you probably wouldn't want to do with something like, say, this Spyderco Paramilitary 2, that has that really fine, really delicate tip. You know, this isn't the type of knife you'd want to uh, be like prying on the tip for. Now, once again, not condoning hard use, but just saying, or not condoning abuse, but just saying that, you know, these are the knives that I use for those situations. So, first off, the first one on the list is... So first off, we're going to go over EDC, and the first one on the list is going to be my Zero Tolerance 0562, and this one is partly a hard user because I bought this one, or actually traded this one, or traded for this one, um, and it was already a hard user. So it already had, and still kind of has, some chips in the blade, um, some nicks, I should say. Um, I've already resharpened it before, but this is kind of one of my more hard use blades. Um, once again, you'll see two a pretty consistent trend of the fact that a lot of the tips on these knives are not super delicate uh, they're not super fine and so that is another part of it so this one is one of my first hard use blades um, or not one of my first <laughs> many but uh, this is one of my go-to hard use blades it's just really a user abuser and it still looks pretty nice I will say I do like the carbon fiber especially out of zero tolerance and this is a nice 20 CV blade but once again, just not afraid to use it. It is already a user and an abuser, and that's how I got it. And I got it with that intent or express purpose to continue to hard use it. Okay, next one up on the list is one that maybe people don't expect, but is the Benchmade, uh, the Benchmade 273 Mini Adamus. Now, this is another one that I have hard used. I have personally chipped the blade out a little bit on it, uh, or dinged the blade, got nicks in it, and have reprofiled it since. So you guys can see I put that nice wicked edge um, finish on it. But either way, this is one that I am not afraid to hard use. Now, I will say this one does have a little bit of lock rock, hopefully. Hopefully you guys can hear it, but um, this guy does have a little bit of lock rock from the batoning, the extensive batoning I did, much to everyone's dismay. But that being said, you know, this lock does is not going to fail. It does have some lock rock in it, but it is not going to fail per se, so I'm not afraid to use it. But just because of all the testing I've done with it and how I continue to use it, it is honestly a pretty hard to use blade. And once again, when it comes to like cutting open bags of gravel or stuff, um, that's something that I've done with this or that's something that I do with this blade fairly regularly the uh, CPM crew wear is a pretty nice bounce back kind of steel um, but yeah and I've also once again batoned with this thing not necessarily as successful as I was hoping but I have batoned with this guy quite a bit and oh, there's this knife sees a lot of hard use so that's the next one the mini Adamus by Benchmade Okay, moving over to the next two, a little bit higher end. These guys I end up hard using, and I think a lot of people are kind of scared to hard use more expensive knives. And for me, um, if you've been around the channel at all, you know, uh, whether it's things like my... Um, <clears throat> Whether it's things like my Chris Reeve Knives Pacific um, or others, you know, I'm definitely not afraid to modify, hard use, and abuse my expensive knives. Regardless to what the cost is, if I bought a knife, I bought it as a tool. And once again, I'm not going to use a tool that is obviously not going to work for an application in an application that is going to fail. But, you know, a lot of these knives, like the Hinder, this guy is not super thick on the spine, but, you know, fairly thick, and it has that really nice reinforced Spanto tip. So, once again, not cons not saying that it's designed to pry, but there is a lot of steel behind that tip. So, if you do find yourself, you know, really kind of, you know, putting up, 
good amount of force behind that tip, it is definitely reinforced for it and it should be able to take it pretty well. It's taken abuse from me pretty well and keeps on trucking. So that's specifically my three inch. My three and a half inch hinder is has a different grind to it and I don't really use that one as hard, but the Spanto tipped hinders are pretty darn tanky and durable. Okay, next one up is the Strider SNG. Now this one probably has the thinnest tip of them all, but once again, this one has a nice long sweeping swedge on it. So that swedge really gives you some good strength at the tip. And once again, I have not had any problems with my hinderer, um, or sorry, my Strider with taking abuse and hard use. And if you know the Strider community at all, they definitely love abusing and hard using their blades. So this is one for me that I will often run outdoors uh, just as a general use folder and I haven't had any issues with it. The CPM S30V is nice and low. It's lower on the Rockwell so it is able to withstand quite a bit of hard use. So those are kind of my workhorses when it comes to everyday carry, you know, like pocket knives or folders. Um, those are the ones that see the most use. Now let's get into some outdoor blades. So the first one in kind of an honorable mention for my workhorse, I really only have one survival knife that I'm throwing in on this list, but it is going to be the CRK or Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. This guy is undoubtedly, as far as my wilderness survival blades go, this is definitely my workhorse. It sees the most and has seen the most action. And uh, I certainly am hard on most of my survival knives. Basically, if it is a survival knife, it does have to, for me, withstand a hell of abuse. But um, yeah, all of them are pretty good, but this one definitely is my workhorse. All right, so now moving over to some more general use slash bushcrafting wilderness blades. The first one up on the list is the SE3. And this one's been with me for a very long time. Definitely seen a lot of hard use. I bent the tip, re-bent the tip back into place. It's still, I think, a little bit crooked, but for the most part, it's straight. But this guy overall has seen an absolute ton of use. And ultimately, it's been really good. So uh, this SE3 is just in a really awesome. It's quite a rock star and has to make the list for workhorses because I've done everything from processing game animals to bushcrafting, starting fires, all that fun jazz with that knife. The next one up on the list is my kind of second serious workhorse for bushcrafting and that is of course the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter and this one while it looks incredibly clean I will give it that has seen a ton of use and abuse and I've had two of these and they are both fantastically amazing and I love the I love Bark River Knives Bushcrafters to death so these are awesome once again very similar to the SC3 it has seen a it has seen a wide variety of use, everything from processing game animals to starting fires, feather sticking, processing natural resources, anything you could imagine to do in the wilderness. My Bark River Knives Bushcrafter has likely done it. This one up on the list and similar in the track or mindset of the Bushcrafter is the LT Wright Legome or Legum, however you want to pronounce that. This one really is a close contender to my Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. I have personally blued this this whole um, knife to make it a little bit more rust resistant, but as far as it goes, the Legome is really one of those perfect bushcrafting knives that is just right in size and in overall ergonomics and setup. So aside from that, it's also a pretty sentimental knife, but it has seen a ton of use and is definitely one of my workhorses. Okay, last one up on the workhorse train is the Bark River Knives Bravo 1. Now, a lot of people give me hell about my Bark River Knives in, the, in my collection, but I really do like them, and I have to say that, at least from my own personal perspective, like all of my Bark River Knives, whether it's the Bushcrafter, the Aurora, the Bravo 1, um, or any of the others I've owned, they all are really solid blades and their performance has been good for me. Now, some people say that they've gotten lemons and, you know, their Bark River knife experience has not been as good. But for me, it's been in my personal experience. I've had really great experiences with them and I really like them. So overall, the Bravo one is, once again, no real difference uh, or no real different than that. And uh, this one sees a lot of use, 
and a lot of hard use. And overall, very tough little blade and nearly a quarter inch thick slab of A2 tool steel. The A2 versions are not usually my favorite, but this one really does hold up quite well does a good job and is really in a nice size range so not too big not too small and it kind of honestly walks the line between being something like a solid bush crafting blade but also a solid survival knife so those are my kind of outdoor workhorses and my edc workhorses hopefully you've enjoyed the video guys going over just a wide variety of awesome knives that i really do enjoy carrying and using the heck out of anyways guys as always, God bless, and I'm out.